near Venus. Power ring users vitals fading, transmitting location for immediate pickup the green glow a ring shown in space. I have to get somewhere safe or else they will take the ring a green man with three eyes said badly injured from a fight with something. Ring, where is the nearest inhabited world, he asked. Scanners show Earth as the next inhabited world, approximately 207 million miles from here the ring somehow responded. Perfect take me there, it may be time to find a new green lantern. Begin searching for a new user when we are close the mystery person said coughing blood. Earth. Izuku Midoriya at a young age he was destined to become a nobody losing both parents at the age of four he was given up to an orphanage. Being in the system didn't help bouncing from home to home, family to family, no one wanted him because he was quirkless. Left to suffer alone at the orphanage, even worse at school. He eventually made a friend Bakugo or Kaken he lived nearby so they would regularly play together, but he too would pick on him for being quirkless. As the years went on things only got worse, Izuku eventually came to the realization that he would have no family and no true friends. He found solace with the only person who treated him like a person, Sister Maria, she was a young sister who worked for the orphanage. She would regularly read to Izuku and teach him. Izuku walked home after another day of bullying, his friend Kaken was the worst. He known his since they were little kids but ever since he found out Izuku was quirkless he picked on his Kaken was determined to make sure Izuku's dreams of becoming a hero were destroyed, you will never amount to anything Deku. You got that don't even think of applying to UA, if you do, I will make sure to beat you to a pulp got it. Kaken's voice still played inside Izuku's mind playing over and over, maybe he's right I think I should just give up, I'll ever become a hero Izuku walked down an alley unaware that a villain was slowly approaching him from behind. Got you kid. Before Izuku could turn around the sludge villain had captured him. Easy kid this will only hurt a lot, the villain slowly began to squeeze the life out of Izuku. With every breath he felt the villain tighten his grip on his body. I guess this is it, I always thought I would die of old age. Oh well maybe in my next life I can finally have a quirk Izuku stopped struggling accepting his fate, unfortunately for him fate had other plans for him. Fear not my boy, why? Because I am here. The voice of All Might roared through the alleyway. Detroit Smash. All Might punched the villain with such force that Izuku was freed from his grasp. Falling to the ground Izuku gasped for air, All Might, he couldn't believe it his favorite hero of all time had just saved him. All Might quickly placed the sludge villain into a small bottle for easy transport. Can I get your autograph, he asked holding out a notebook he pulled out of his backpack. Of course young man, I always have time for a fan. All Might grabbed the notebook and signed his name across two pages. Handing it back to the Izuku, he couldn't contain himself, it was like seeing someone who just won the lottery. If that's all I will take my leave, crime won't stop itself you known, see you later kid. Izuku quickly snapped out of being starstruck, wait. I have a question I want to ask you. All Might was about to jump away when he stopped. Sure I got time what is it boy All Might tucked away the villain in his pocket making sure he wouldn't get away. I is it possible for a quirkless person to become a hero? Izuku's voice was quiet almost passive. All Might eyes went wide, quirkless. So he's one of the 20% he shook his head, I'm sorry young man but no I don't think so. Without a quirk you couldn't be a hero no matter how hard you try. If you want to help people become a police officer, they accept quirkless people it may not be as glamorous as being a hero but you will still help people. I'll be going now, farewell off he went, all Might jumped away, leaving poor Izuku in the ally to his own thoughts. Alone in the ally Izuku didn't move from where he stood, I get it, someone as useless as I am could never be a hero even All Might said himself. I get it now why Bakugo and all the other kids picked on me, this is just how things are meant to be I guess Izuku walked down the street with his head down. As he walked down the street he heard an explosion coming from a nearby store, at first he was going to ignore it until he heard an all too familiar voice coming from the store. 
you bastard let me go. I will blow you apart, it was Bakugo. Somehow the sludge villain had escaped from All Might and captured Bakugo. Izuku watched in horror as his friend was being taken over by the sludge villain, how? All Might should have taken him to the police station by now, so what happened and where is he, he saw all of the pro heroes at the scene did nothing. Why aren't they doing anything? Izuku disliked Bakugo but not enough to let him die. Izuku ran past the pro heroes, throwing his backpack he landed a hit and the sludge villain's eye. Gah! My eye who did that? Izuku ran towards the villain scratching at the villain to release his friend to no avail. Deku! What are you doing here you useless piece of shit? Bakugo yelled. Trying to save you. You know why because I am here. Izuku smiled, faced with his greatest fear, he smiled. How very brave of you young man. You are all that embodies a hero, however why don't you leave this to the heroes? California smash. With another powerful punch All Might blew the sludge villain off of Bakugo. This time making sure he wouldn't escape he locked him away with the help of the police. Izuku and Bakugo were both given a good talking to, especially Izuku when they found out he was quirkless. Listen kid what you did was just plain stupid, without a quirk you could have gotten hurt. Lucky for you All Might was nearby to step in and help you, next time you may not be all that lucky. After a few minutes they were both allowed to leave, Izuku walked down the street with a frown on his face. Could this day get any worse? Making it to the orphanage he opened the door to be greeted by Sister Maria. Oh hello Izuku welcome back, how was your day? Maria smiled, a rather tall woman with her long brown hair and brown colored eyes. It was, good, I met All Might when he saved me from Avilion he said placing his backpack on the floor. Avilion. Maria ran to Izuku checking his body, are you alright? Did he hurt you? Let me check. On no maybe we should go to the hospital to be safe, her muttering never ceases to amaze him. I'm fine Maria, all might save me before anything could happen Izuku smiled knowing that her worrying was a sign that she cared for him. Are you sure, she asked stopping and looking into his eyes, he nodded. All right then go change and get the little ones ready for dinner in an hour Izuku went upstairs where all the rooms were located. Once in his room he closed the door and collapsed onto his bead, I think I should take a nap falling asleep he dreamed of becoming a hero, of what could have been. After 40 minutes he was woken to the sound of laughing, huh, he looked around to find Lisa and Levi about to write on his face. What are you two doing? Nothing. Lisa and Levi were twins who were abandoned by their family for whatever reason. Izuku was a sort of big brother to them, so they would follow him around. Oh really? Then what about that marker in your hands? Izuku pointed at the marker in Lisa's hand. The two just whistled and pretended they had no idea what he was talking about, fine don't tell me but it's almost dinner time get yourselves washed up he said getting off the bed. All right, the twins said in unison as they ran out of the room. A few minutes later Izuku had called all the other kids to go wash up and head downstairs for dinner. The dinner table was long enough to fit 40 people at once, Izuku let the smaller kids get their share of food first before allowing himself to get something. Usually he would get very little since he would be the last one but he didn't mind as long as the little ones got their fill. After dinner Izuku would walk down to the beach and sit near the cliff's edge overlooking the ocean and watched as the sun set every day. I guess things could be worse, I should always look at the bright side as Sister Maria always says Izuku closed his eyes and the darkness began to take over the sky. Boom. Izuku woke up to a loud sound, what was that, he looked around but saw nothing, until he looked up. There a green ball of something was coming down, burning up as it entered the atmosphere. It looks like an asteroid. Wait is it heading over here? The object got closer and closer, Izuku saw this and began to run for cover throwing himself to the ground, just then the object struck the cliff breaking off a good portion of it. The green glow was still there and pulsating rapidly. Curious and thinking it was an asteroid Izuku APP rocked it slowly. 
As he got closer he noticed that it wasn't an asteroid but rather a person. H hey are you alright, he asked the green man with three eyes. Whoever it was they were badly injured and need help fast, wait here I'll go get help as he was about to leave a hand reached out and stopped Izuka from leaving. D don't go the green man's voice was quiet. Mustering up his strength he spoke once again, I I need to give you something first before it's too late the man raised his hand up to reveal a green ring with a symbol in the middle. What is that? Izuku asked, before he could ask anything else the ring began to float in the air glowing green. It began to scan Izuku with a green light before speaking. Izuku Midoriya of Earth, you have the power to overcome great fear. You have been chosen the ring flew onto Izuku's right ring finger. Welcome to the Green Lantern Corps. A green ball of energy covered Izuku completely, after a second it disappeared to reveal Izuku in an all green suit with the symbol on his chest and a mask covering his face. What is this? Izuku looked at his hands and legs covered in all green. You are now a green lantern, protectors of the universe. You young men are destined for great things, I wish you the best of luck those were the final words that the green man spoke before dying. Izuku stood on the cliff in disbelief, that is until he heard the sound of police sirens approaching. Taking off the ring Izuku dusted himself off, I need to get out of here looking back at the now core he saw a lantern. I should take that, it looks important grabbing it Izuku ran down the cliff towards the beach he'd go the long way to get home. Making his way back to the orphanage Izuku snuck in and went straight to his room putting the ring and lantern on his desk he threw himself onto the bed exhausted. Man what a night, I better sleep it off I'll test what that ring can do tomorrow. It was early in the morning when Lisa and Levi snuck into Izuku's room, see I told you he's still asleep Levi said standing next to Izuku. He should be awake by now Lisa pouted seeing Izuku was being lazy. She then looked around his room and saw the lantern and ring, hey, what's that, she said, picking up the lantern. It looks like a lantern, where did Izuku get this? Levi wondered looking at the ring. It looks expensive, you don't think he stole this right? Izuku would never do anything like that. Lisa said yelling at her brother. This made Izuku turn in the bed. See you almost woke him up she said but now in a much lower volume. But you're the one who yelled Levi said putting back the ring. But you're right Izuku would never steal anything. Lisa nodded, that's right, so what do you say you want to wake him up and find out where he got it, she smiled putting back the lantern. Levi nodded knowing what his sister wanted to do. They carefully got on top of his bed without waking him up, ready, one, two. 3, go. They both jumped into the air and came down hard on Izuku's stomach waking him up in the most brutal way they could think of, wake up Izuku, they both yelled. Izuku grunted in pain when he felt all that weight suddenly on his stomach, I I thought I told you two not to do that anymore. They jumped off of the bed, yeah but it's more fun waking you up like this Lisa said laughing. Izuku sighed, what am I going to do with you two? Izuku got up to go to the restroom. Izuku where did you get the ring and lantern? Levi pointed at them. Izuku's eyes went wide, oh I forgot about that oh those things I found them on the beach, they looked cool so I brought them back. I see, well you do have a thing for bringing back junk. Just make sure sister Maria doesn't find out, you already know how scary she can be Lisa said shivering. Yeah I know. Now it's almost time for breakfast, Izuku led the twins to the dining hall where they had breakfast. Izuku only ate an apple and a piece of toast but it was enough. Izuku went to school, got bullied, and went back to the orphanage just like any other day. It was now night time when Izuku decided to test out the ring, I don't know how but this ring has some incredible power. I felt last night when I put it on. Taking a deep breath Izuku but on the ring, as soon as he did his body was covered in a green light after a second or two he re-emerged with a green suit, a mask covering his mask, and the mark of the green lantern core on his chest this is awesome. After a minute Izuku calmed down, I wonder if I can fly. That guy from yesterday fell from the sky so I wonder. Izuku looked at the open window, 
the window was large enough for him to jump out of. Izuku walked to the far edge of the room, taking a deep breath Izuku ran towards the window jumping out. For a split second it looked like Izuku was flying but he quickly realized that he was falling towards the floor, O-S-H asterisk T Izuku yelled as he fell towards the ground. Come on. Come on. Fly. Fly. Izuku closed his eyes and braced for impact but it never came, W what happened opening his eyes Izuku noticed he stopped just short of hitting the ground and was no hovering. This is a start, now how do I fly? Izuku thought about pushing his body upward and the ring responded to his thoughts and made him fly up. Cool so the ring responds to my thoughts. Izuku was starting to get the hang of flying, he decided to fly over the nearby city, wow this is amazing, I wish the twins can see this he went lower flying between buildings. That's when he heard a yell, stopping mid-air Izuku looked around trying to find the source of the yell. Where did that come from? The ring began to glow and created a green arrow pointing to the left. Cool, I better go see what's going on. Izuku hovered over an alleyway below him he saw a girl being chased by two thugs. Oh no she needs help without hesitation Izuku flew down towards the alley. The young girl ran down the alley as fast as she could, holding onto her purse. No I can't let them have it, all my money my dad gave me for the apartment is in here. He's spent too many hours working to get me to UA and I won't let them take it. She ran fast, maybe a little too fast turning the corner she fell twisting her ankle. She tried to get up but couldn't put any pressure on her foot. That's when the two thugs caught up to her, man you run fast the shark faced thug said catching her breath. No kidding I almost gave up chasing you said the thug with sharp scissors for fingers. But now you go nowhere to run so hand over the bag. As the two thugs approached her, the girl closed her eyes not wanting to see what was going to happen to her. Suddenly a green light shined on the group, the two thugs looked up to see Izuku floating down and getting in front of the girl. I'd leave her alone if I were you. What the hell, what's a hero doing here? The shark-faced thug said stepping back. I've never seen you before and I know every hero in this city and you aren't one of them. So that means you're nobody, get him. The two jumped at Izuku only to get hit by a giant green boxing glove, sending them flying towards the wall. Awesome all I have to think about doing it and the ring makes it happen. Izuku then turned to the scared girl. Hey are you alright? The girl opened her eyes to reveal Izuku in front of her offering a hand, why yeah I'm fine thanks to you. Thank you she took his hand and dusted herself off. Wow she's cute Izuku looked at the girl, and no problem, now I suggest you call the police to come pick these two up Izuku pointed at the now unconscious thugs. Yeah thank you, you mm who are you anyway? She asked. Oh I'm is, Green Lantern he quickly corrected himself when he noticed he was about to expose himself. Well thank you Green Lantern, my name is Yurika Okako you really saved me. Wait where's my purse? Oh no the money Eurika's face began to fill with worry. Don't worry I got it, Ring find her purse with a green glow the ring scanned the nearby area, when it found the purse it picked it up and brought it to Eurika. Here you go miss. Eurika grabbed it, then hugged it, oh thank you so much. If you don't mind me asking shouldn't you put that much money in the bank? Izuku asked. I was until those two chased me down. The money is for an apartment I'm renting for when I get into UA said Eurika. I see so you're an aspiring hero then, that's good we need more heroes in this world. Well if that's all I'll be taking my leave then, make sure you call the police Eurika, goodbye, and with that Izuku jumped into the fly and took off. Wow he can fly. He said his name was Green Lantern. Hum never heard of him. Must be a new hero in the city Eurika took out her phone and began to call the police. No more than three minutes had passed when the police showed up along with the pro hero eraser head. After arresting the two they went over to Eurika to take a statement, so Miss Eurika can you tell us what happened a rather talk man in a trench coat said with pen and paper in hand. So I was going to the bank to put in some money when those two attacked me. 
It seemed they wanted my purse but instead of giving it to them I took off running and ended up here. That's when I fell twisting my ankle, seeing that I could no longer run, the two thugs were about to take my things when a hero came by to help me she said as the detective wrote down everything. A hero you say? Eraserhead said, raising an eyebrow. Yeah he had a green suit with a weird logo on his chest, oh, and a ring that could do some really cool stuff Eureka explained. There was no hero reported in this area. Did he say his name? Eraserhead said. Yeah he said it was Green Lantern Eraserhead and the detective looked at each other not knowing who that was. Looks like we got a vigilante on our hands the detective said closing his notebook. So it seems, great not another one Eraserhead said sighing. Wait so he wasn't a hero? I knew he looked too young to be one. He had to be at least my age, well whoever you are thank you Eureka said looking towards the sky. Izuku made his way back to the orphanage, flying into the window he landed. Man what a day, I can't believe I actually saved someone from real villains as he was talking to himself the ring's green light began to flicker and then disappear. What happened? Izuku was now wearing his normal clothes. Izuku looked at the ring, maybe it has a battery. Great, how am I going to power up a ring? He walked back and forth in his room thinking of a way to charge the ring. That's when the lantern began to glow, what the... Izuku got closer, I can feel it talking to me. He raised the ring to the lantern. In brightest day in darkest night no evil shall escape my might the lantern began to glow brighter and brighter. Let those who worship evil beware my power, green lantern's light. Izuku could feel the power coursing into the ring, the ring glowing brighter with every second until finally it recharged completely. Oh I see so it's like some sort of ring power battery. Good to know. Izuku had enough excitement for one night, taking off the ring he threw himself onto his bed to sleep. Oh eh. Six blue guardians sat on tall pillars with a giant green lantern power battery in the background. It seems we have a new member of the corp one of the guards said. So it seems, we must have someone bring back the new green lantern. It looks like he's on the planet called Earth said another. Very well, Kilowog, take a task force to bring our new lantern here the guardian gestured down to a tall alien with a bulldog looking face approached the guards. Thank you guardians for this task, I shall leave at once Kilowog said before turning around and leaving. Izuku spent the next couple of days secretly training with the ring at night when everyone was asleep. He found that the ring, if pushed too hard, can actually hurt him and his mind, putting a strain on his mind and body. He would fly around the nearby city and stop any villains he would see, soon he would become known as the vigilante known as Green Lantern. The police wanted to take him in for questioning but every time they tried he would just fly off before they had the chance to cuff him. They still didn't know what kind of quirk he had, only that he was a young man in his teens and liked the color green. He has even been given rewards for his good deeds, he once saved an older couple who ran a bakery from a robbery and they offered him fresh bread every day. Izuku graciously accepted and every day he would take the bread back to the orphanage. When Sister Maria asked where he got it he would also say the same thing, donations. However there were people who did not like what Izuku was doing, especially pro-heroes. In just a few days Izuku already had a couple of run-ins with some local heroes. This began to catch the eye of more prominent heroes in the area. Police Station We need to bring him in, Nanomasa said sitting around a table surrounded by pro-heroes. Other heroes tried multiple times but he always escapes with the help of his quirk Eraserhead said frustrated. You have to admit that quirk is really amazing. I don't know how it works but he can seemingly make whatever he wants with it, he could even fly said midnight. Yes, while his quirk is impressive, what he's doing is not. It's illegal and dangerous, he's putting himself and the public in danger. That's why I brought the big gun to bring him in Nisa said, turning his chair to the door. It will be alright my fellow heroes. Why, suddenly the door exploded open. Because I am here. A tall man with a muscular build wearing a bright and colorful costume walked into the room. 
it was All Might the number one hero and he was here to help. Thank you All Might for coming here to help us with this vigilante problem, said Nizu. But of course, I see why you would want my help. This vigilante has been gaining support of the public. If he continues to gain support it would surely spell disaster later. So how can I help? Later that night. Izuku was flying around the city looking for crime he could stop when he noticed someone waving him down from a balcony. I wonder if they need any help flying down his ring shined a light on the person. Need any help? That's when he noticed who it was, oh hey I remember you, yeah you're that girl I saved from those guys trying to steal your bag. You're Erika right? Yeah that's me. Thanks for saving me. Actually do you mind turning off that light it hurts my eyes Eureka said shielding her eyes. Oh right, sorry about that, Izuku said embarrassed. Anyway so have you gotten into UA yet? Eureka chuckled, no not yet, the exams are in a week so I still got time to train. Izuku floated down closer, I see so what's your quirk anyway? Oh my quirk Eureka showed one of her hands. See those little pads at the ends of my fingers. If I touch something with all five fingers I can make them weightless. That's so cool. Izuku sniffed the air. Wait do I smell something burning? Oh no the cookies. Eureka hurried back inside and after a few seconds she walked out on the balcony with a tray of burnt cookies. Man I worked so hard on these and now they are ruined. Izuka floated down and landed on her balcony and grabbed a cookie and proceeded to eat it, hey they're burnt they won't taste good Eureka said shocked. Izuka didn't care, he grabbed one after another until there was none left, they were actually pretty good, it was only burnt on the surface he was too poor to care plus he wasn't a food critic so everything tasted good to him. Eureka's face turned red, why you really think so? Yup of course. Man. I wish I could have some more Izuku smiled. If Izuku learned one thing about living in an orphanage it's never to waste food. Well if you want you can drop by sometime and I can make some she said fidgeting. Izuku's eyes gleamed, really? Can I Eureka nodded. Awesome. I'll make sure to come back real soon. Izuku looked down at the construct watch he made and noticed it was getting late. Crap I should go patrol the city one last time before heading home, I'll see you later Eureka he waved as he took off into the sky. Bye Green Lantern. Make sure to drop by real soon she waved as he disappeared from view. Izuka flew into the city looking for any crime in progress when he found none he decided to rest on a nearby roof, man she was cute, I'm so glad I got to see her again and I get cookies this night can't go any better. Sorry to burst your bubble kid but it's not going to end how you'd like a voice behind him said, scaring Izuku. Jesus you scared me Izuku looked up to see Eraser Head. Is that you Eraser Head? The pro hero that can erase quirks temporarily, he was now in full superhero fan mode. Yeah it's me and tonight is the night I bring you in Izuku watched as Eraser Head's hair began to spike up and wave around. His eyes changed colors signaling the activation of his quirk, now that he's lost his quirk I can take him down myself. However Eraserhead was shocked to see that the green glow around him didn't disappear. What your quirk should have been erased. Yeah about that, sorry but I don't have a quirk Izuka rubbed the back of his head. What no quirk, then how do you explain your powers? Said Eraserhead. I can't really myself but I do know I get it from this Izuku held up his hand, showing the green lantern ring. A support item then, so that means we can take you down eraser head smiled. We. Just then his ring went off. Danger alert, danger alert Izuku looked around frantically for the danger but saw nothing. That's when eraser head wrapped Izuku in his capture weapon, immobilizing him. What is this stuff? Finally, looking up, Izuku saw him, All Might was flying towards him. All Might. Then he pieced two and two together. Oh no. Delaware smash. All Might yelled. At the last second Izuku was able to put up a bubble around him protecting him from the hit. The hit was strong enough to throw Izuku into a wall bouncing off of it, 
inside the bubble Izuka gritted his teeth. That's when he saw a crack around the shield. H he cracked the shield he smiled. That's all might for you. Wow I can't believe it's actually him. Breaking free of the binding eraser head put on him, Izuka landed on the ground. With a loud boom all might landed a few feet away. Amazing. You're so amazing. Can I have your autograph he asked eyes gleaming with excitement. Uh you do know we are trying to bring you in right said All Might not knowing how to react to this. What, why I've done anything wrong, said Izuku. Illegal use of your quirk and using it to hurt others, yes they were bad guys but still. You need to go to hero school and have a hero license for that All Might explained. Yeah but that costs money, something we don't have, plus I do this for my family. The less they have to deal with the better, if I can make even the slightest difference in their lives then I'll gladly break the rules clenching his fist a green aura was seen around Izuku as he readied himself for a fight. I see so your motives are pure but that still doesn't change the fact that what you are doing is illegal. So I'm sorry but I'm bringing you in. California smash. All Might yelled as he ran towards Izuku ready to knock him out. Izuku pointed the ring at All Might as he created a wall to slow down the hero. Making contact with the wall All Might noticed it didn't break, rather it only cracked. What? Even if I'm not using my full power this wall shouldn't be a problem? What is it made of? Sorry about this All Might Izuku said hovering above All Might. Izuku started to cover All Might in a safe, that should keep you in there until I get away he took off away from All Might. Do you think a safe is enough to stop me? Think again. All Might began to punch the safe from the inside repeatedly. Izuku stopped and looked as the number one hero struggled to get out. That's when Izuku noticed something, those strikes, they're not random, he's hitting the structural weak points. Every time he hits the spot his strikes are getting stronger. At this rate he's going to break out Izuku shot a beam at the safe repairing it. Eraser head landed on a nearby roof and watched as Izuku held All Might in a safe but found something interesting. Why hasn't he flown away yet? Then he noticed Izuku's face. He's focusing hard, that means he has to concentrate in order to use his power, so that means we have a chance. Grabbing a nearby brick eraser head with the help of his capture weapon launched himself towards Izuku ready to strike him with the brick. Being too focused on All Might, Izuku did not see Izawa coming and with a brick strike to the ribs he yelled out in pain breaking his concentration on All Might. Smash! He yelled out and with one final strike All Might broke out of the safe. Seeing Izawa was falling he jumped up to catch him. Got you. Don't worry about me, take him down. Izawa yelled as All Might put him down on a roof. Jumping back at Izuku, who was still in pain, all Might managed to neck chop him rendering him unconscious. Man he was tougher to take down than I thought, and that quirk really is amazing. I had to use about 50% of my power just to break out of that safe. You can tell me all about it later for now let's get him to the police station and with that the two Hiris took Izuku to the police station. Little did they know the ring around Izuku's finger began to pull screen, sending distress signal. Once there they tried to take off the ring but every time they did it would shoot out a beam of energy knocking back whoever tried to take off the ring. They even tried to take a blood sample to ID him but once the needle got close the ring would create a shell around Izuku protecting him. Izuku woke up the next morning in a cell with a massive headache, ow why does my head hurt so much looking around he found his surroundings unfamiliar. Where am I? You're in a cell inside the police station a voice was heard. Turning to the source Izuku saw Naya Mesa through the bars of the cell. Izuku tried to get up but noticed that his hands were in a strange instrument, those are quirk suppressor cuffs, so don't try to use your quirk. Now I want to ask you a few questions. Sitting up Izuku stared at the detective, figured as much. First question, who are you? Asked the detective with a pen and notepad at the ready. Can't say. Izuku looked away. Naya Mesa sighed, come on kid don't make this harder than it already is. Izuku stayed silent. 
Fine next question, do you want to call a family member or something so they can be here with you? I don't have any family, they're dead, I've been on my own since I was four he said with sadness in his voice. I see, I'm sorry with the help of his quirk Nayamasa could tell what Izuku just said was the truth. Next question, what's your quirk? From what All Might told me you have quite the quirk. Don't have one, I'm quirkless Izuku looked away. Truth, but that's impossible Nayamasa's eyes went wide, then how do you explain your powers? To tell you the truth I don't know myself but it has something to do with the ring I have Izuku looked at his cuffed hands. Truth so you really are quirkless. Nayamasa couldn't believe it, how could a quirkless person have this kind of power? Before he could ask another question the police station started to shake. What's going on? Just then a police officer ran down the stairs, sir we have a problem. Some strange people walked into the station asking where the Green Lantern was. Great, he has a fan club. All right I'll be right there, have All Might meet us in the lobby. You will stay here and stay quiet and with that Nayamasa ran up the stairs leaving Izuku. I have to get out of these things, come on focus. The cuffs began to glow green from inside after a few seconds the cuffs broke, setting Izuku's hands free. Good I got to see who's looking for me. Flying upstairs Izuku heard the sound of gunshots then silence, reaching the top of the stairs Izuku saw All Might being pinned down by two people in green lantern uniforms. Hey let him go. Izuku fired a green energy beam that split into two hitting them and knocking them back. Easy kid. We aren't here to fight you, one of them said. Then why are you here? Izuku said, putting up his guard. Just then a kilowatt walked in between them, we're here to take you kid. You need to go to OA. You are a green lantern so the guardians need you to answer a few questions. Can they answer my questions about this ring? Izuku showing the ring. Yes, now will you come with us? Kilowog said extending out an arm. Very well I'll go with you but I need to stop somewhere first, I will need the lantern battery to charge up my ring Izuku said. All right we go there then you will go to OA for us said Kilowog. Lead the way. Izuku turned to the police, sorry about this guys but I got to go. Wait. All Might yelled trying to stop them from leaving but it was too late. The group took off into the sky breaking the ceiling as they went. Izuku led them towards the orphanage, telling them to wait outside. Izuku went in and took off the ring. Sneaking past the twins Izuku made it upstairs but to his horror sister Maria was waiting for him just outside his room. He prepared himself for a scolding, but instead he was met by her embrace. Midoriya where have you been? She said as tears fell from her eyes. When you were in your bed last night I started to get worried so I went out looking for you. She spent the night looking for me Izuku hugged Maria back. I'm sorry Maria, I had to take care of some stuff. The important thing is that you're back, safe and sound she said wiping away a year. Now tell me where were you? I I stayed at a friend's house for the night, Izuku lied. A friend, someone from school. She questioned. Why yet? Anyway they invited me to stay for a week so I wanted to tell you if I can. Izuku said, muffling the last part. Normally I would say no way but since I trust you Izuku I will allow it. Izuku was surprised to say the least. This will give you the perfect chance for you to explore what's out there and see what you can become. Thank you Maria. I love you. Izuku hugged her out of excitement. Later Izuku gathered his things and walked outside where the group was waiting for him. Are you ready? Kilowog asked. Izuku nodded, yes let's go. And with that Kilowog created a rocket ship construct and with a loud boom the group took off into space.